Hello everyone, I think all of you are familiar with the popular TDA2030 chip. This is an integrated audio amplifier chip that operates in Class AB. It can deliver a maximum power output of up to 20 to 24 watts into a 4 ohm load. But on average, the output power without noticeable distortion will be around 14 to 18. What? Here's a brief note about this video itself. I actually finished it almost completely back in 2021 and then put it on the back burner. So, many of the shots you'll see later are already 4 years old, and everything was filmed on my old camera so the quality will be a bit lower than usual. In the description for this video, you'll find an archive with schematics and PCB layouts, as well as links to some original sources and datasheets. Let's get back to our chip. It's a monophonic chip, still popular today, and before the advent of cheap class DONC chips, it was the most popular and was used in almost all budget audio systems. It provides perfectly decent sound quality. Ultra budget. It has a simple circuit design with a minimal number of external components. It comes with short circuit and overheat protection. And the maximum output current reaches up to 3.5 amperes. Versatility is its strong suit. It can be powered by either a single polarity or dual polarity voltage supply. The supply voltage range is from to volts. However, these limits will depend on the manufacturer of the chip. The chip is produced in a 510 package, TO220B case. There is a more powerful sibling, the TDA2050, rated at 32 watts, as well as a much higher quality equivalent, the LM1875, rated at 25 watts. In this video, we will look at some typical circuits and a few unconventional solutions using this chip. I'm sure many of you had no idea what this chip or its counterparts in the same family are capable of. In the documentation, you can find a circuit with both a dual polarity power supply and a single polarity one. If an output power of around 20 watts isn't enough, there are at least two ways to increase the power. Option 1. Connecting two chips in a bridge configuration. In this case, the power will almost double, but you'll need speakers with a higher impedance, at least 8 ohms. With dual polarity 18 volt power and an 8 ohm load, I managed to get about 45 watts of clean power from the bridge setup. In these shots, the signal is fed to the amplifier input from a laboratory signal generator. The output is loaded with an 8 ohm resistor, which is submerged in water. On the oscilloscope, there's a clean sine wave with an RMS of about 19 volts. Given the load resistance, that's about 45 watts of clean audio power. At the same time, the efficiency is around 47 to 48 percent. But what can you do? Class AB comes with its sacrifices. Now about the quality, the amplifier actually sounds really good. The sensitivity is at a high level. You can connect it directly to a line input without any preamps. The next way to increase power is by adding external transistors. If the output power is low, the internal transistors of the chip itself do the work. As the power increases, the voltage drop across the specified resistors also rises. And if that voltage drop is enough to turn on the external transistors, they will kick in. These transistors can handle much higher current compared to the chip's internal transistors. This setup provides up to 35 watts of output power into a 4 ohm load. The power is limited by the chip's supply voltage. And in theory you can power it with a lower voltage while supplying the output stage with a higher voltage, thereby getting more power out of it. Everything said and shown above you already know. Now here's the most interesting part. If you take a closer look at the chip itself, it becomes clear that the TDA2030 is nothing more than an operational amplifier. It has a non-inverting and an inverting input, an output and power supply tins. But unlike a classic operational amplifier, it has a powerful output stage. Based on this, you can conclude that you can build certain circuits with it that require an operational amplifier. Actually, to be more precise, it's not exactly an operational amplifier in the classic sense. It's a power amplifier based on an operational amplifier with a differential input. As a simple example, let's look at the following circuit. Essentially, it's a signal buffer that can be used to amplify weak signals in terms of current. That is, the output signal exactly matches the input, both in shape and amplitude, but the current is much higher. You can use such a buffer, for example, to supplement low power generators, chargers, lab power supplies, and so on. In general, these are sources that require an increase in output current. This brings up the question, what prevents us from turning this circuit into a powerful voltage regulator or even an adjustable power supply? The answer is almost nothing. Here's the schematic for such a unit. 
This is a powerful voltage regulator, and to build it all we need is a reference source. A regular Zener diode can serve as such a reference source. The voltage from this Zener diode is fed to the input of the chip through a variable resistor. The rest will be handled by the chip itself. The maximum current of such a source can reach up to 3 to 3.5 amperes, but keep in mind that the power dissipated by the chip should not exceed 30 watts. The output voltage can be adjusted from 0 to 30 volts. At the same time, the maximum voltage that can be applied to the input is no more than 36 volts, but it's better to keep it between 32 and 34 volts. In this circuit, pairs of resistors set the gain factor of the chip. In our case, the gain factor is 6. The reference voltage formed by the Zener diode is 5 volts. Taking this and the chip's gain into account, the output voltage will be around 30 volts. If you need a lower voltage, you need to recalculate the specified divider. It's important to understand that this is a linear power supply. That means the chip will heat up, sometimes quite a lot in certain modes, so you'll need a serious heatsink, and possibly even force cooling. The next circuit might be of interest to beginner radio enthusiasts. It's simple, easier than a transistor-based multivibrator, and is essentially a powerful relaxation oscillator. This kind of oscillator has a high output current and allows you to connect powerful loads, like automotive halogen lamps, directly to the output without any additional transistors. Let's say that after powering up the chip, we have a high level at the output. In this specific case, break time equals 0.5s forward slash, the capacitor charges through the designated resistor, and as soon as the voltage across it reaches approximately two-thirds of the supply voltage, the chip promptly switches the output from high to low. Break time equals 0.5s forward slash, then, the previously mentioned capacitor begins discharging through the chip's internal open transistor until the voltage across it drops to about one-third of the supply voltage, which is indeed present at the chip's direct input at that moment. Subsequently, the entire process repeats itself. The charging and discharging times of the capacitor are almost the same, so the duration of the lamp flashes and the idle time will also be the same. The frequency of the output pulses depends on the capacitance of the capacitor. The smaller the capacitance, the higher the frequency and vice versa. By increasing the operating frequency and adding a coupling capacitor to the output of the microchip, you can connect loudspeakers, thus creating a very powerful siren. Well then, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to rate the video with a like or dislike, and check out my other resources via the link in the description. All the printed circuit boards featured in this video can also be downloaded along with the complete archive via the link in the description. And with that, it's time to say goodbye. As always, this was Kassiana K. With you. See you next time. Bye.